222 day, we will be talking about XLM and SHX, which will also tie in some PayPal mafia connections into XRP because we're really talking about AI and quantum technology as it ties into Stellar and Stronghold. A lot of that comes from how Jed Caleb has also been investing in AI technology, specifically with the company called Voltage Park. He has even posted about it over the last couple of weeks, which is actually a pretty strange tweet because he's talking about AI and LLMs having a rave. But he is kind of a strange dude. And of course, Stellar and Stronghold are insanely connected into IBM. And if you recall, IBM actually approached Stellar. Here is the former person who is in charge of that department at IBM, Jesse Lund. In terms of um, IBM obviously has its own uh, blockchain with Hyperledger Fabric. Uh, can you tell us, you know, why did you sort of choose Stellar? at first rather than uh, say Hyperledger? Yeah, so um, Hyperledger Fabric is a protocol that we've invested in um, and we're now really investing if you consider the development resources that we're putting into Stellar as well. Um, but Hyperledger Fabric is really designed for private permission networks and we can explain a little bit more about what that means. Whereas Stellar um, is a public permission network. So if you look at the spectrum of kind of blockchain architectures or topologies, you have sort of this enterprise space, which IBM is really good at participating in. That's kind of our, our bread and butter. And so we built a blockchain protocol, Hyperledger Fabric, that kind of goes after that to make um, large enterprises, to give them a toolkit to help them to establish private transactional networks on their own, right? Um, on the other end of that spectrum is kind of the free-for-all, the Wild West, the Bitcoin, where you don't need to know anybody. Anybody can join the network. Uh, you kind of come, you don't need to trust anybody. The, the network itself provides some level of trust to allow you to, to transact or interact. Mm -hmm. In the middle somewhere is kind of a hybrid approach where it's a publicly accessible network. Kind of anybody can join and, and through some validator provide transactions on the network, but it's still permission. You know who the validators are in some ways, or there's some kind of trust built in to the validating entities on the network. And that's why we picked Stellar. Uh, and that is the hybrid concept that I speak on often, where a lot of these very large enterprises and institutions will have their own private permission network and then Stellar will be able to connect into that to transact in the public. Here's also another interesting coincidence. There is a company called Lumen and they are working with IBM on scaling AI. Now, of course, that does not have any direct relationship to Stellar, but I just think it's a pretty interesting coincidence. And then you've got Stronghold that has been talking about their credit cards that will tie into IBM Cloud. And we will talk more on that topic specifically here. However, before we get there, it's really just yet another pretty clear example of how Stellar, Ripple, Stronghold, Axelar, all of these different companies come from the same people. And that's really why I have become so fascinated with all of the fintech and crypto companies that trace back directly into the PayPal mafia. In April, we had an announcement that IBM is intending to invest $150 billion into general computing technology and infrastructure. However, about 20% of that is specifically concentrating on quantum computers and they also talk about AI. Here's a little bit more information on that. And it really ties into Stellar as well as Stronghold because Stronghold worked with IBM to create Stronghold USD. As far as the connections with quantum computing technology and Stellar go, there is a little bit more to that $30 billion investment by IBM. Stellar joined the Hyperledger Foundation specifically to create quantum PAFE architecture. We've got IBM working on quantum resistant cryptography. Stellar is implementing quantum ready security. 
and you've got some combined work on the hybrid public private chain solutions I talked about earlier. I'm not too personally hyped on the quantum threat to crypto because I'm not saying that that technology does not exist, but the people who control that stuff don't really want to crash everything yet because it hasn't gotten up as high as it has. So I, I'm not an expert on that and I don't really want to talk about it a whole lot, but in my own humble opinion, I'm not too terribly concerned about a quantum threat taking out Bitcoin anytime soon. And I have talked about how Stellar has been working towards quantum resistant technologies in the past, but I really haven't ever gotten into it because I don't understand the t technical aspects in that extent, and there just hasn't really been a lot out there. However, while a lot of other cryptos use ECDSA signatures, Stellar went with ED25519 from the very start, which essentially means that it will require significantly more quantum computing power to actually crack it. And they specifically work around and work with adaptive cryptography and continuously upgrade standards. In early 2024, we had the Protocol 20 upgrade on Stellar that rolled out the Soraban contract platform. And I'm not a computer programmer, but it is one of the more advanced smart contracting protocols out there in terms of the actual coding language and the capabilities itself. It's not written in solidity like Ethereum's is, but instead it is written in Rust, which is a lot more efficient. So in June, which is actually right now, we've got IBM Z15, Z16, and new Z17 mainframes either being updated or rolling out new. And I don't talk about IBM itself a whole lot because it's more of a computing company as compared to crypto. However, they're really at the core of a lot of these cross-chain permissioned private projects and protocols. And it really seems as if they will be a lot more than just a computing company, which is kind of proven here because they process about 70% of world transactions on IBM mainframes that are created in America. And on top of that, they have some operating systems coming out that are adding quantum ready AI onto that hardware. So with all of that said, which I'm always a little uncomfortable speaking about because I'm not really up to date on that, here we get into the stellar and the stronghold implications a lot more. So we have had a lot of announcements specifically tied into Stellar about stablecoin integration. You've got a lot happening with Paxos, you've got PayPal, Stripe, and each of those companies is rolling out their own integrations as well. For example, here you've got P PayPal partnering up with Coinbase. And all of these stablecoins and these payments processors, they're all essentially becoming Stellar Anchors, which are on and off ramps. So I do want to come back to IBM a little bit because of the deep connections into Stronghold. So there are some conspicuous things around the connection there. So technically speaking, Stronghold USD is not currently active. However, if you go online, the Stronghold webpage is still online and it prominently re refers to IBM Worldwire. On top of that, Ed and Tammy Camp have spoken on a panel with someone from the Federal Reserve talking about creating a digital dollar. So technically, Worldwire has been made inactive by IBM, but in my own opinion, as I've expressed multiple times in the past, I think that the Stellar network itself essentially became what Worldwire was trying to do, where it was trying to create a 
enterprise and an institutional payment structure. Well, because Stellar is so involved with IBM, that kind of creates that public-private hybrid environment. And on top of that, WorldWire was actually turned into an open source protocol. There are some new things with Stronghold as well. So you've got some IBM cloud integrations that are rolling out soon that involve Stronghold again. And that is happening this year in 2025. So you can see that here. It refers to Stronghold's API here. There are two integrations with Stronghold, including IBM Cloud, and it calls out Stronghold and IBM here again. It's very likely going to be somehow connected into each payments. However, Stronghold has Stronghold Net, which is its own payment network that has really been concentrating on POS transactions. However, they're also talking about a credit card as well. And it is speculation still. However, with the combination of Stronghold Net and IBM and the IBM Cloud integration, and because Stronghold has been so involved with H payment infrastructure, it is really starting to come t together into a payment network that involves Stronghold. So it is speculation, but here is how it could actually work. So IBM could offer payments as a service that would enable companies to transfer their payment systems to cloud infrastructure, which would include processing credit card payments. And then you can put that on chain on Stronghold Net. So that could scale to pretty much any scale and quite possibly beyond the current scales of those payment networks because it's making it a lot easier for people who aren't traditionally able to, to have access. And there are some really interesting coincidences with Stronghold that relate to what a credit card typically looks like right now, especially with rewards points. So Tammy has talked about tokenizing rewards points for a long time, and that would mean you could earn points at Starbucks and you could go spend those points earned there at a different store because they're all able to be tokenized and converted on chain the same way you would complete a cross-border payment. And Captain X actually calls out some more specifics here, but I've already talked about it enough, so I kind of want to stop rambling about it. And just as a reminder, there is one chart out there that shows that the SHX coin or token itself spiked all of the way up to $21. And that happened at just about the same time that IBM had a couple of announcements about crypto, stable coins, and quantum technology. On top of that, the market cap of IBM and the market cap of the token itself were just about the exact same for an extremely short time. So is it a coincidence? Was it some insane price spike because of some crazy option on a DEX? I don't know, but it's another point. And it once again comes back to PayPal, Mafia, Stellar, and Ripple, and especially Stronghold because they combine people as well as technology from each of those companies.